Hi, everyone. This is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Ooh, I am back on the island, and it feels so good to be home on Copanyong in this little fairy tale island called Copanyong. If you didn't already know it, if I haven't already said it a million times. Um, in today's podcast, I have a very juicy episode of my own integration process, things that are going on in my interpersonal relationships, drama, 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 <laughs> but it's all for the best, right? It's all opportunities for growth and healing. At least this is what I tell myself. Um, and also a lot of you have started to reach out to me and give me a lot of things that you would like to know more about. So I have on my computer next to me stuff that I would be excited to share with you. And first, I invite you to take a deep breath with me. <sighs> and notice how you feel in your body right now. And anything that's coming up for you, I invite you to send it love, to send it healing vibrations. <laughs> um, as my camera is freaking out. <laughs> um, and ask yourself today, what can you do that is nourishing for you in your body? What can you do to show up for yourself today? It can be a small thing. It can be a very big thing. <laughs> Whatever that means for you, I feel like your intuition will tell you. And I invite you to do it and to honor yourself and to honor your flow of what you need to do in order to feel the best in your body in order to grow in your life and grow as a soul we are spiritual beings having a temporary human experience that is what's happening right now and i always say that the most important thing is that we feel good in our bodies and we have as much fun along the way because it's all happening, whether you want it to or not, whether you're fighting it or not, whether you're having fun or not, it's all going to happen. It's all unfolding. And for me, it's super important that I have fun and that I feel really yummy in my body. <sighs> so I just got back here from Thailand. The last place that I was in was in L.A., it's super interesting because I've traveled all over the world. I've lived in London, Berlin, New York City. Um, and this was the first time that I've been to L.A. as an adult. Um, I went there as a kid with my family to go to Disneyland. Uh, and I grew up in Northern California. So California is my home. It's funny because um, a girlfriend of mine was saying, like, Brittany, I feel like you have translated yourself so much culturally around the world and been able to, you know, do your impact and do your work and help raise the vibration of the collective. But there's this reason why your soul chose to be born in California. And I, I received that. I made a little face as I did that because I was like, yeah, whatever. And then I went to California. I went to LA and I was like, oh, I get it. <laughs> because, um, yeah, culturally, it's like people that grew up just like me. Uh, went through the same similar soul lessons and the language like literally like our isms are uh, our cultural references are all the same and so it was like a lot easier for me I felt very much more in my body I think is the best way to put it in LA because uh, I didn't have to do as much translating in order for people to understand me and understand where I'm coming from. And also there's this thing like, I love fashion. I used to do modeling. And uh, here on the island, there isn't as many opportunities to dress up, I guess, you know, because most of us are like barefoot, fancy free, which is its own thing. And I love that. I love that we have naked beaches. I love, I love the freedom and the wildness of being here on the island. And also I love dressing up. I love feeling like, you know, my clothes are an external representation of the current vibration that I'm in, whatever that means, right? Uh, and in LA, I felt like it was, it was cool because, you know, like in other cities, even when I lived in New York City, it was like people that were dressing to dress cool were dressing, you know, from Nordstrom's or uh, H&M or just kind of the mainstream blah blah clothes that all kind of look the same and are like also kind of the same colors of like beige black, navy blue, like these muted colors. And in LA, everyone dressed like me in the sense that it's quirky, it's fashionable, it's colorful, the weather is really nice there. And um, like it's sunny a lot. And so it's like easier to 
dress in the way that I naturally want to dress. That might not be a big thing for other people, but for me, that's a really big thing. And I was really excited about that. I felt very inspired and activated by the, um, by the, just the artists there, the innovation. I went to um, a dinner for regenerative agriculture, which is like, basically how can we take care of the land and be kind to mama earth so that she keeps giving us the organic food and the things that are actually nourishing for our bodies. And yeah, just in LA, in general, LA loved me and I loved LA. I met a lot of amazing people. I had uh, beautiful connections. I went to fancy parties. I did all the things that my little heart loves. Um, and I feel like for me, like the island here on Copanyong is very feminine energy in the sense that you're meant to come here and like heal and kind of be in like this womb vibration of like everything's really easy. It's so beautiful. It's paradise here. And, you know, heal your stuff. And also sometimes when I was here, I would feel like, you know, I might as well be in spirit because everything is so easy and everything is like so flowy. Um, and I'm here to make beautiful things in the world and to create as much impact as I can. So going to LA for me felt, it was like one of the first places where I could see myself living for part of the year, even if it was like up to three months, making my impact there and uh, building a community there and kind of bridging that world and this world. Like Copenhagen will always be my home base for as long as, you know, Mama Copenhagen wants me here. And also there's a part of me that, you know, really is excited to be out in the world and excited to be amongst my people, you know, my community uh, culturally. Um, and healing the stuff with my family, I think was a very big step in this because um, growing up for me, like home equaled a place that was energetically, emotionally, and sometimes physically unsafe. And I always needed to be like hyper vigilant. There was always a lot of like triggers and yeah, just unsafe, right? <laughs> and for all the years before COVID, for those eight years where I was traveling all these countries, I realized now that I would stay somewhere long enough where until like a trigger would come up and um, or something would happen in the community that would bring up trauma, like a trauma response in me because it wants to be healed. Every time something comes up, it reminds you of your trauma is an opportunity to heal it, right? Um, and I would just move on. I would like be like, okay, bye. I'm going to go to the next place. I'm going to just leave. <laughs> so uh, I'm proud of myself that since COVID, I've kind of started to look at this, been able to heal these triggers and use them for what they are. It's like an opportunity to look at our belief systems and to heal the things that are so asking to be healed. It's really our inner child really asking to come home into our body and for it to be safe in our body. And so coming back here to the island now has been a beautiful integration of both of those things. So what I was trying to say before is like understanding the stuff with my family, like understanding from a deep, uh, like a deep emotional level that my family actually really does love me. They're just, you know, doing the best they can with being um, understanding that my family actually does love me. They just are choosing to be in fear uh, programmed by their religion and that's okay. They're choosing their community um, as their spiritual family. Um, helped me to close this loop that I had of my inner child asking like, does my family not love me? Like, is there something wrong with me? Even though like I knew from a intellectual conscious level oh my family loves me you know um but of course like when they don't talk to you for 10 years you're like what the fuck <laughs> you know uh so going back there and spending a lot of time with them and seeing my cousins and my aunts who have left the religion and speaking to their experience as well has helped me to understand that my family are imperfect just like we all are like we're all doing the best we can and they love me and also they're making their choices. So I'm not going to like when you p feel pity for someone and when you um, say like, oh, I feel sad for them or like if I were to say to my family or about my family, I feel bad for them. They're being brainwashed. You know, that would actually disempower them because they everyone has the opportunity at every single moment to shift their perspective, to shift their belief system to something that is more empowering for them. And so I'm not going to do that about my family because they have their choice. At every single moment, they can choose love. They can choose to step into a vibration where 
like I, ple- I feel like it's totally possible. People do this all over the world where they have a religion. People in their family are not part of that religion and they're still able to share love. And yeah, maybe like at holidays or something, sometimes it comes up and it gets heated or whatever, but they're still able to stay in this vibration of unconditional love that like you're my blood family. I love you and I'll always be here for you. My family is not able to m- be there in that way that meets my standards. And coming back I feel like it was definitely like this Homer's Odyssey journey of like coming back home and integrating everything with my family helped me to understand this is just where they're at and actually I have standards of how I deserve to be treated and I have standards of what family means for me and what community means for me and how I choose to have what I call chosen family people who are in my community who have earned the right to hear my story, who have proven through consistent action that they are someone who is trustworthy, that they will show up in a way that is nourishing and supportive for me. I already have that. And so, and I said this to my mom, I was like, like the second time that we met up, she was just kind of like, well, my religion is my whole world. So I just don't really see what we have in common. And I was like, we have so much and like so much to share mom like like we have so much and also i it's okay like i have my people you know of course i would love to have you as one of my people in my life my soul chose to be born through you um and she was like yeah i know i've listened to a lot of your podcasts and i know that you have like what you call your chosen family and for me that was such a place of power that i was like i'm not being abandoned here you know actually I'm choosing to go the other direction because this is not meeting my needs this is not serving me in a way that actually is nourishing for me and for my expansion as a soul here in this lifetime (sighs) take a deep breath on that one oh my gosh and so many of you have messaged me and said wow this is really powerful to hear because as we as we um grow our consciousness as we evolve spiritually and understand that we have a connection to a higher power source god the universe whatever you want to call it we recognize that we don't we wait hold on i have a lot to say like it just got all like confungled in my brain there's so many things i want to say here Okay, what's coming to me is to share this part. Um, oh, this is what it was. A lot of you are saying, like, I love my family. I'm, I'm, this is my blood family. I, it's my responsibility because I'm more spiritually awake or I'm able to step in more unconditional love. If basically, like, my family is not treating me well, but they're my family. So I need to do the work because they're not awake enough spiritually to understand that they need to do the work. And or that it's too painful maybe for you at that moment to disconnect for them because like society is programming you like this is your family this is how you show up for them this is what it means to be a good kid da, da, da. I don't agree with that I don't agree with that in the sense that I don't think you need to push your family away or tell them to fuck off like there is this middle ground of unconditional love there's this middle ground of I am here I am in alignment I have standards of how I choose to be treated And I am always open to my family meeting those standards and being in my life. And if they are not meeting those standards currently, then I choose to put less energy into this relationship and open myself to other people, chosen family that are, have the capacity, have the willingness, have the energy to show up for me in a way that is nourishing for me in a way that actually honors who I am currently as my authentic self and also holds, has the the space to hold for my expansion and that was one thing I really realized about my family was yeah I could play the game where I'm like you know uh, I'm doing my best to live by your bible principles and this and that but like my mom has watched my my podcast like she knows that I host play parties oh my gosh and you know that I'm sleeping with people outside of marriage I'm having sex outside of marriage which is against the bible principles that she abides by um so I actually talked to one of you about this who, you know, his family is very religious and you came to one of my play parties and this, this friend of mine, he was saying, yeah, I could never let my family know about this because they would judge me. And, and I was like, yeah, but then you're not honoring your, by not sharing who you are authentically with your family and by playing this game 
of like, I will suppress part of myself in order to receive a connection from you, from your family, then you're actually denying parts of yourself, you're self abandoning. And yeah, you can do that. But that's, that's not going to feel good in your body. And that's not that's not actually what we are here for. Like, especially our generation or those of you who are listening, you're awake enough spiritually, you're, you're switched on enough to understand that the game of life here is for us to be our most authentic self and to shine, to shine that most authentic self with the world. And when you're able to do that, then people have the opportunity to rise to the occasion and honor that version of you. That's what I mean by like honor who you are as your core right now and also honor who you're becoming. And for me, it's like, it's a deal breaker if my family is not able to honor like who I am right now authentically, that I hold spaces, I hold safe spaces for people to grow in their sexuality and to heal sexual trauma and to play and to have fun and to enjoy, you know? And also I honor that that is what they need to do for themselves, you know? So it's like most people can't hold the polarity within themselves of, um, I love my family. I'm grounded in myself enough to understand who I am authentically. And it's okay if they are not able to honor that because I'm going to go over here and create a tribe of people and a chosen family who can honor that and want to honor that and love me for being who I am. So I'm sharing this with you as an opportunity to to step into this for yourself, to be the most badass version of yourself, which means you being your authentic self and shining your light and being like, I don't give a fuck if people don't like this, because when I am actually myself, when I'm actually my authentic self, then the people who actually deserve to be in my life and who can vibe with me on this level of me being my authentic self, they're going to be attracted to me. But there's this quote that's like, you can't find your tribe if you're not being yourself because they're not going to know like who you are they're, like it's not going to match vibrational I'm totally mixing up this quote but you know what I mean <laughs> um basically your tribe will not be able to find you if you're not showing yourself all the way authentically and so if you're really craving this soul family this chosen family of people that feels nourishing and supportive to you I invite you to step into your power more and by that I mean step into your authenticity more and care less about the current people's reaction in your life if they are not vibing with that because maybe they're not meant to be in your life at the specific part of your journey and that's what i mean it's like this is the this is the difficult this is the opportunity for growth this is the challenging thing about all of this is it can feel very painful to keep your heart open to people and keep yourself available to your people, say your, your blood family, if they're not meeting you authentically right now, while also basically like for many years, this is, it's not like I just popped out like this and I'm like healed, right? Like I've spent many, many years getting to this point, many therapies, many psychedelic journeys, much like shadow work. And by shadow work, I mean looking at the parts of myself that I found unworthy, the parts of myself I didn't like about myself, the parts of myself that were trying to get my needs met in an unhealthy way that's shadow work. So it took me many years to get to the point where I was like, I love my family unconditionally, my blood family. I love, I love my blood family unconditionally. I also love my soul family unconditionally. With my blood family, I have my heart open. So I'm here and I'm energetically available for whenever they want to connect. And I actually really do believe I've seen it in visions of like my mom coming to the islands and me picking her up at the pier. And we even talked about it. And um, I feel like that will happen in my lifetime. And I'm really excited for that. And also I'm okay with this temporary disconnection right now. If it means that I'm able to honor my authentic self. Because when I'm honoring my authentic self, I'm attracting in the people in my life that are also honoring their authentic self and shining their life. And those are the people that are nourishing for me because it's supportive of my growth and my expansion to be surrounded by people who are spiritually switched on, doing their best to grow as a soul and have as much fun as possible. Um, I wanted to share something that my, my aunt uh, sent to me today. This was really nourishing for me as well. Um, wait, hold on. <laughs> my, doo -doo -doo. my my thing is upgrading. 
my face off. My, my computer is loading. And let's see. Oh, okay, so apparently it doesn't want to do that. I invite you to take a deep breath. Well, Cause I know I just said a lot. Uh, and I think that this is like, for a lot of you, cause you do reach out to me and you sh share a lot of this stuff that it's like super impactful for you to hear this because I feel right now we're just barely coming into the age of Aquarius. Uh, and if you don't know what that means, I'll explain it. It means like we are entering, I think we've already been in it for a year now, but like we're entering in a period of 200 years where we are, um, it's a collective upgrade vibrationally. So as a mass consciousness, like as a society, as an entire human species, we are stepping into an age where we are going to start appreciating and valuing our, us being our authentic selves, our, us being sovereign beings, individual souls here in this time, in this lifetime, while also being supportive and wanting this deeper feeling of tribe, this deeper feeling of I am being my authentic self. I'm shining my life. I'm sharing this with you. And we are able to do this together for a collective upgrade of let's take care of the earth. Let's be in community. Kind of like, this is why I talk about tribes a lot, like us ancient tribal systems, because this is primal in us. This is actually how as humans, we are meant to live from a psychological and an emotional standpoint. Yes, we have proven as a species that we can take care of ourselves physically and keep ourselves safe from danger physically for the most part. Um, but as a society and as a mass consciousness, like as humans, as individual humans, we have this primal basic need for connection and not just like, hi, how are you doing? Like surface level. I'm talking deep soul connection where I am showing you my vulnerability. I am showing you the parts of myself that I'm not proud of, the parts of myself that feel scary to share. And you are able to receive this with love, with grace, with, with you just have the capacity to see me as my authentic self, as a soul who is continuously growing, who is looking at my negative beliefs and shifting them and expanding them to something more beautiful and positive for myself. And this tribal feeling of like, we want to do it together. You, you, you can sense this. I can sense things ahead of time from like I could sense COVID ahead of time. And I can sense this ahead of time that there is a shift happening where within the next five years, many of us are going to go and live together on a piece of land together. Those of us that are switched on, we are going to gather together, gather our resources and literally live physically close to each other and do our best to grow our own food and raise our kids together. I just rubbed my eye. Um, and this is a super positive thing. There's a lot of things happening in the world that you could say are very negative. I was in the States. Politics is a huge deal right now in the States, as it probably is globally. The war is very present and like all the wars. <laughs> and at the same time, because we're in this age of Aquarius, we are as a collective being like, okay, let's stop trying to live in silos. Let's stop trying to solve this individually or leaning on our government or our religion to solve it for us. We need to, as a species, do this together as a sovereign being in deep tribe, working this out together. This is going to be the way the whole collective as a human species is being guided towards from an energetic standpoint. And this for me, this is like so exciting because this is just how I am. This is me and my embodiment. Like I, this is just, I'm rising Aquarius. If you have any of your Aquarius in your chart, astrologically, you will feel very excited about this because it's like, oh, I don't feel so much like an alien anymore. The whole species or those of, I don't think it needs to be the whole world. It's just those of us that are waking up to this, like, I want to live in a better way that is more natural for me as a human on this earth. I want to live in harmony with nature. I want to live in a tribal setting with people that I love. I just rubbed my eye and now it's all red. Okay, so I want to share what my aunt said. Um, so it's interesting because my aunt is like... Um, she is, she left the religion and got married to someone who's not a Jehovah's Witness. So 
she technically is not living in sin, but my grandparents are still treating her in a way that is not, is, is conditional love. Like they want her to be in the religion in order to feel this outpouring of love that she received from them before. So she felt this hard shift energetically of how they were treating her from when she, before she was in the religion for most of her life. Like I grew up with my aunt being in the religion and being very committed. And I asked her, I said, so I met with her. And it's the first time I've seen her in 15 years. I love you and Karen. Um, and I asked her, I said, what, why did you leave? Like you were in it for most of your life. Like what made you, what made you decide to leave? And she said, the way that they treated my, my cousin, uh, her son, she's like, when he got, he got kicked out of the religion, like they call it disfellowship. And they told me to not speak to him. And I told them, I will not stop speaking to my children. These are my children. I birthed them. Like as a mother, I will not do this to my children. And she started to realize there was a lot of hypocrisy and just, you know, could just, she started waking up to all of it and she decided to leave. And, um, you know, she has a lot of pain from, and rightfully so, from the way that my grandparents have treated her, her, it's her parents have treated her. And she said to me, she's like, I cannot imagine how you feel Brittany like I could never do that to my child what your mom has done to you about not speaking to you for 10 years and not being in your life and not being supportive she's like that just hurts me on a soul level that I can't even put into words and I um and she was saying that she's had a very hard time releasing the anger and resentment that comes from the situation of yeah feeling this conditional love from her parents from my grandparents to her and I shared what I could with her and just, you know, I just think I went around like sprinkling my little fairy dust on everyone in the States, especially my family of just like, we can do this better. We can do better. We can, as a humans, we can just choose love, you know, like even if on the outside people are not showing it back, we can choose to show love. And that's how we can show up. It's not about what happens. It's how you choose to respond as a soul and how you choose to treat people in the 3D, how you choose to act, how you choose to feel. This is your soul growth. So for me, I look at it as an opportunity for more soul growth, like a bigger opportunity for soul growth that my family has chosen this path because it was just a more challenging, um, it's a, it was like maybe a more challenging opportunity for me to show unconditional love than it might be for other people. Like it's just like a deeper level. Um, but when you are given these deep opportunities for growth, those also come with the reward of if you're able to, that's why I look at everything like a video game. If you're able to work through it in a way where you're honoring yourself, you're being your authentic self, and you're also showing love, you're coming from a place of heart space, from vulnerability, and you're able to show up in the situation. For me, that is winning that level in the video game. Um, and it comes with rewards of a deeper awareness of how everything is going in the world and a deeper embodiment in my body and, it, and, a, and like more capacity to hold space for my community, for the people that I love in my life. Like it's just, it's like, you know, the people that I coach, like it's like I've been there. No, I actually know what that feels like exactly because I've gone through it and I've, I've gone, come from this darkness and I've come to, you know, this place of peace this place of satisfaction, this place of deep embodiment and feeling so fucking yummy in my body all the time because I'm honoring myself and I'm being my authentic self. So anyways, I wanted to share with you what she said to me. This, I, I received it this morning. Um, she said, your words and insights about what's happened to us because of this religion touched me and continues to make continues to make me think and work more about letting the resentment go and remind myself to be forgiving and practice showing the unconditional love to my parents that I actually want from them. The way that I've always tried as a mom to my kids. Um, and she was saying that only the universe knows like the pain and the suffering that she's gone through and that she was basically listening to my podcast like on her drive going back and forth and that it's really helped her to um it's really helped her to grow and to be able to heal within herself just witnessing my story and witnessing my ability to show unconditional love is like helping her it's like showing her this vibrational marker of like what she can 
what she can step into as on an embodiment level. And, and also just having her support and love, like really means so much to me and like her kids, her two kids that I hung out with my cousins, hanging out with them and my cousins on my dad's side. And I invite all of them out here this winter and I feel like a lot of them are going to come. So it's just like really exciting because it'll be the first time I've ever had any of my blood family come visit me when I'm outside the States. Like, wow, that's so exciting. Like there's, oh, I'm going to (laughs) cry. There has been like a pain that I have experienced that I never really shared with people. Like when my friends have their parents or their family come visit them here on the island because I was always like, oh, I'd love for my family, my blood family to come visit. And the closest that I was able to experience this was when my godparents, my godfather Richard came into the island and I showed him around and I just felt so excited to like show him everything and like show him my life here and like show him like how excited I am about everything. Um, But yeah, and not but, and it will be very exciting the day that my blood family comes. And I know a lot of you in my blood family are listening right now, so get your butts out here. Um, that was one thing that was exciting to hear too, is like how much of them actually listen to my podcast, you know, cause sometimes I'm just like, I'm out here on this, you know, this very remote Island, like sharing my light with the world. And like, is, is like, of course I know that all of you beautiful souls are listening. And also there's something really important about having your family care and listen and like show up for you. And knowing that a lot of them do makes me really excited it makes me want to do it even more okay there's so much more i want to share with you um i'm just so excited to be back here on the island i feel like i'm gonna have this as a base and be somewhere else probably la if something else doesn't pop up but like that's the place that's calling to me right now um where i am off the island and you know bridging this gap and also when i'm here it just feels really exciting to be like grounded here again and like loving my house and my animals oh I miss Afro and Shadu my cat my dog and my cat so much so it's been really nice to like ground in with them and just dance around my house and feel really yummy in my body and I was grateful that I am so in tune with my body these days that like like I had jet lag like jet lag worked out in my favor in the sense that I've been really tired very early at night And I actually really like going to bed early and waking up before it gets super sunny here. I'm super hot. Uh, And my little Irish skin is like, Um, so I've been waking up at like six and doing my meditation, my breath work, going to the gym super early, journaling, doing all the things. Um, And so I did that yesterday. I had a very full day and it was really beautiful. And when I got home, I was excited to make a podcast yesterday and I started to feel some resistance and I was like, my physical mind was like, no, make the podcast because I have so much to say and I get so excited to talk to you. Uh, and also my body was like, we, like jet lag is like going in these waves of like super high energy, feeling very connected to source, super tapped in, turned on all the things. And then it's like, we're turning off now. And that's kind of, it was one of those moments yesterday when I got back from the gym and I ate some food. And so instead of making a podcast, I decided to get a massage and to relax and to watch some TV and I like have not watched television or any movies or anything besides the plane. I haven't watched anything since before. Like I was like, like since I was on the Island last, which is like over a month and a half. Um, and it's, I noticed that for me, uh, watching TV and giving myself permission just to relax is so nourishing for my body. Cause I really have a lot of integration that's still landing from all of the experiences. I feel like I could write a whole book of all the things that happened in the States in these last six weeks. And then again, this morning I woke up at like 6 AM, did my meditation, my journaling, my breath work. And I was like getting ready to go to the coffee shop to get a little chai and then go to the gym. That was my intention. And then my body was like, no, nope, we actually need to rest. So at like 8:30 in the morning, I like curled up under the covers, got my cat cuddled with her and just watched TV for like two hours. And because I did that, Suddenly I had a ton of energy and I went to the coffee shop. I saw a bunch of my friends. I dropped in and now I'm like, oh, I'm excited to make a podcast. So now I'm here. And after this, I'm going to go to the gym and the sauna and go for sunset. So I'm sharing this with you that like, again, for most of us, we're generators on the human design and we're meant to um, follow our flow. Like in general, we're supposed to follow our excitement just in general. This is like a baseline of our life. But like if you're feeling frustrated or if you're feeling like 
out of alignment of like something's just off then this is an opportunity to check in and like be really gentle with your body because when you do that and you give yourself that space your body gets what it needs and then it works with you and you get all the energy that you need to do the thing so instead of pushing myself to do the things in the 3d that i really thought logically made sense in this certain order i allowed myself to flow and to honor my body and to receive nourishment from resting in bed and also speaking to friends and connecting i had the energy to come here and share with you and to give you know externally out into the world so when we are filling up our cup in whatever way that means whatever way is nourishing for us then we will have the energy to do the things in the world that we are destined to do that is our sole mission and that's really beautiful and i've been reading this book that is talking i've been also something i'm really excited about is i got a lot of physical books in the states um that's one thing that's a little bit hard to get here uh in thailand is books like physical copies of books which i love like i grew up reading like a book a day like i really 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 read so much growing up and of course you can order them online but there's something about just going into a bookstore and seeing what finds you like seeing what you're intuitively guided to. And um, I've been finding some a lot of books on masculine and feminine energies. And the one I'm reading right now, it's called Sovereign Love. And I actually met the author in LA. Her name's Danae something. Um, but Sovereign Love, highly recommend it. And I've been taking it into the sauna here. Like we have a dry sauna and just reading like, and then going in the hot tub and reading some more. And just, I love it. I love it so much. I love like being in a place where I'm like in a spa environment and then like reading something that's super activating my body mind and soul are very happy (laughs) but okay so what I'm trying to say about her is that or this book is that there was this line in there that I found really interesting there's a lot but this one I want to share is that as a woman I'm going to speak to the woman here is that as a woman I there it was saying that as a woman we have been programmed by society to feel this general like discontent with our life and this is usually because we have been severed from our connection to our bodies and our connection to our spirituality and the reason why this is specific to women is because as women we I mean this is probably something that could be true for everyone but like especially as a woman like our connection to our body is our connection to source because we literally create life through our womb and it's also our guidance for our intuition so a woman who is like deeply in her body and very really feeling yummy in her body and creating the space for her body to feel safe and to feel dropped in then she naturally is going to be connected to source the universe god because this is the channel and it's open and it's receptive you know and so i feel like by reading that i was like wow it's like such an act of rebellion as a woman to allow ourselves to feel good in our bodies and to be so in love with our lives and so yummy in our bodies that we're just like outpouring over it's overflowing this energy to everything around us and this is the energy of you ever heard of the word effervescent this is just like this shiny gooey energy of like like sparkling so this is like i imagine like sparkling fairy dust everywhere you go of just this and even like from a woman to a woman, it doesn't matter who encounters this woman who's in her body. Like when you go out and you're like so feeling good in your body and you're so dropped in, it's it's like such a beautiful thing to receive, whether it's a woman receiving this energy from me or a man. It's like because it helps everyone else drop into their bodies and it helps even from a subconscious level, helps encourage other people to tune into their bodies, men and women and others it helps everyone to feel more connected to their bodies more connected to source so as a woman we have the superpower to help everyone feel good in their bodies and everyone feel connected to source if we allow ourselves the space and the time and whatever we need to feel nourished and supported and to love our bodies and to feel connected and tapped in and following our intuition And I want to share a story about this. So <laughs> I was in LA. So I was telling you like, LA loves me. I love LA. Yeah, we have a great relationship. And um, I got invited to this potluck I was telling you about. And the guy who invited me, he's really nice. His name's Joe. And um, 
he said he's been a coach since 1993, which I was like, wow, I was like three years old when that happened. Um, but anyways, um, so he has a lot of experience in, and he specifically loves uh, exploring the same as me about the energies between the masculine and feminine and how to be fully resourced for everyone, how we can all be fully resourced in our own masculine and feminine energy so that at every given moment, we can access whichever parts of ourselves need to be accessed in order to serve us in that moment. Uh, and I, th I found that really beautiful because I was like, oh, it's about like having the toolkit within yourself energetically so that at every moment you're able to show up for yourself and to feel connected to yourself and to serve what is your highest good in that moment and be able to show love in that moment. So he invited me to this potluck and he also said that, you know, like, um, if you come, then I'm, I, I was leaving that night. I was flying out at night at like midnight. And, um, he's like, if you come to the potluck, I'm happy to give you a ride to the airport, which I thought was a super nice thing. Cause it was like an hour away. And, uh, and also we were having such a great time connecting the last time I saw him. So I was like, yeah, of course I'd be down to hang out more. Uh, so I went to the potluck. It was itself really beautiful. And he, when I got there, he asked me, um, I have a new client and I would love for her to come in the car with us uh, to the airport and just witness our conversation because I feel like it would be beneficial for her to hear how we speak. And I, I, I'm in my full like feminine receptive mode and I was like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever, you know. I didn't really understand exactly what he was talking about, but I was like, I trust you, whatever. Um, so she ended up not coming on the car ride to the airport just because she was tired. She'd stayed up late the night before, but I did talk to her at the at the event and we had a nice time and and so when we're in the car on the way to the airport, I asked him, why did you want her? Like, what, what was the point of that? Why did you want her to come in the car with us? I'm curious. And he said, um, it is such a unique thing for us as a society to encounter a fully embodied woman and a woman who feels really good in her body. And I was like, okay, thank you for seeing me. And also, what do you mean by that? Like, what exactly? I was just, for me, like from my own brain, I'm like, what is different between me and the women here um, in the States? Because I was like, wow, I felt like culturally we're more similar and da, da, da. And he was like, he was listing some qualities about like, um, that I was very present, that I was open, that I was receptive, um, that I was flowy, that I was doing what I needed to do to create a space for me to feel safe and for me to feel safe to be in my body that I was showing up for myself in a way so that I could, like I was creating a container for myself energetically around me so that I could be dropped in so that I could be fully in my body and he was saying that like even though she didn't come in the car with us and hear the conversation she, he was going to be able to use that as a marker like the conversation I had with her at the dinner as a marker of a vibration that she wanted to step into. So she came to him for this. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting that like me just being me can help other women. I mean, I know this already. This is what I coach women on. And um, I feel like I do this through my play parties as well. Um, but just me being me is like helping activate vibrationally the divine feminine and other women. And just that, I just loved it that I could just be me, you know, like, this is the thing about being a woman is like, you just want to be yourself, you know, it's like the, the, like I was saying in my last podcast with my girlfriend, Michaela, how when we were on acid or she was on acid on her birthday and I was hosting her, I kept saying like, you're doing great. And she was like, fully on acid. She's like, do I need to be doing something? And I was like, no, you're being great. You're being great. All you have to do is be yourself. And she was like, oh my God. So this is a new motto is for us to just be great and to feel yummy in our bodies and have this be an act of rebellion against the current society that is programming us to do more and to feel guilty if we're not productive because that's their measures of whether you're worthy of connection, whether you're worthy of feeling belonging in your body and to your tribe. And I don't agree with that. I agree that we, I, I feel that we, or I believe, whatever. <laughs> I believe that we deserve and we are worthy of being ourselves and feeling belonging and feeling connected just for being ourselves and just for being, just for existing uh, in this timeline, in this lifetime. Um, and this was, I want to share something I just actually channeled right now when I was journaling right before this podcast. Um, 
so I had a lot of time away, you know, from uh, my breakup and from just like a lot of perspective, like meeting a lot of beautiful men in the States that are culturally very similar to me and are emotionally mature, spiritually awake, you know, all the things that I find very attractive and inspiring and activating. And um, something that came up for me that's really been in my psyche and it's been percolating over the last period of time is that when we realize that we have a connection to source, like as a complete sovereign individual, so like as a complete individual on our own, when we realize that we have a connection to source, this changes our whole viewpoint, or at least it's changing for me, what I look for and what I actually want out of romantic relationships. So what does that mean? Like, why am I saying that? And, um, hold on, I wrote this down. I guess I should have underlined it because I put it in a lot of different things. But basically it's like, um, when we are looking for, like when you're in love, And you're feeling like, you know, when you first get in love and you feel like everything is universally aligned and everything's magical and they call it like this love bubble, right? Like literally there's hormones going off in your body and like serotonin popping off in your brain or dopamine or whatever. And you feel just kind of like everything is magical and aligned in the universe. And what this actually is, is you feeling more connected to your own source connection by being in connection to another person. And so it's like you're using this external love and you you loving someone else, they loving you to prove to yourself that you feel worthy of having a source connection. And I'm not saying any of this is negative. Um, What I'm saying though is that it can become codependent. It can become I need you to love me so that I feel connected to a higher power. That I, and I don't think any of us are doing this consciously, but when you actually feel so deep in your knowing that you are connected to source, that you are worthy of love just for being a soul in the timeline, in this lifetime, you don't need that externally. You don't need an external reflection of someone loving you so that you feel this connection to source. And when you don't need that anymore, I started asking myself, what do I actually need out of romantic relationships? Like, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> what, what is the point of this? <laughs> um, and also what I realized too is like people are really treating you, they are treating you in a way of actually how they feel about themselves. And if someone doesn't feel connected to source, like I really feel this is how it is with my father, he doesn't feel connected to this higher power, this source in a way that he can feel supported by it and nourished and that he's worthy of love just for being himself and being his authentic self. That person, say we're talking about my dad, he can only show love externally to the extent that he loves himself and that he's allowing himself to receive this from source. And this is why people say, I've heard this, this saying that um, when someone is doing something that you consider bad or evil, it is actually a reflection of their spiritual growth. Because when you are spiritually awake enough to the point you will realize that we are all connected and that we are all loved by each other and like on a higher level, we are all loved and supported and connected. And so you wouldn't hurt anyone else because you're actually hurting yourself. And you wouldn't need to hurt anyone else because you feel in your power. And the only time someone hurts someone else is when they feel disempowered and they're trying to claim this power back. And when you're in your power, and by that I mean feeling very supported and connected to the universe, to God, to source, you would only treat other people with love because you would be filled up with this love coming through you. And that's the only thing that you would, it would be like an abundance. Like why would you treat someone negatively when you're just in this energy of unconditional love for yourself and for everyone else around you. So this might feel esoteric. Sometimes I go on these rampages where I'm like speaking super esoterically. Uh, My girlfriends laugh at me about this. But what I'm trying to say on a practical level is that if someone's being mean to you in your life right now, yes, you should still speak up for your boundaries and speak, speak up for your inner child or whatever you need to create safety within yourself in your body. And also 
um, if you're able to understand it from a higher perspective, like how I was saying about my family earlier, if you're able to understand that this is them showing externally the love that they actually feel towards themselves, um, and that like with my family, they can, they, their love is conditional because the religion has programmed them that they have to act in a certain way in order to receive love from source, from God. Um, and so that's extended externally to me. And so basically, like, if someone's being mean to you, it's probably because they don't feel a connection to source. They don't, they're not getting filled. Their cup is not being filled. And so they're trying to either dominate other people um, through hurting other people or victimizing themselves towards other people, which is also a way of control and dominance. Um, but really what they're actually trying to get out of the situation is this feeling of connection to source, which is like really interesting to look at it, that this is all like, just keeps coming back to this one thing. And like, as more and of a, more of us wake up spiritually and we realize that we already have this natural connection to source, all of us have this ingrained in us from birth because we are actually spiritual beings having a human experience. We can't get away from it even if we wanted to. Um, and it's always there. And it's like, we are so, we are so powerful that we can actually choose to believe that we are disconnected from source but we can't actually disconnect from source. We can't actually disconnect from God, the universe, but we are so powerful that we can create a reality bubble around us that we are disconnected. And a lot of people are just born into that reality of feeling disconnected. And this is what's taught to them from the religion, the government, society, their parents. And so as we wake up that we are connected, it's easier to step into this love. It's easier to step into this compassion for others that feel this disconnection. Like I wouldn't pity them because everyone has a choice. And when you pity someone, you're actually disempowering them because you're saying that they don't have the power to change, but they do. So just having this empathy and this compassion that they'll get there, whether it's in this lifetime or the next, um, and that it's all okay. Um, Oh yeah, so what I was saying that um, if we are chasing the feeling of being in love, when in reality we are chasing the feeling of feeling connected to source. So that was my download when I was journaling. Afro's barking at who knows what. Um, basically the download that I was, I was envisioning when I was meditating and that came, through me, to, came to me in my journal today is that as we build this tribe, this feeling of soul family, this tribe that I was saying that we're all coming back to and like our primal core needs for connection as community, like deep soul connection. Um, this will meet a lot of the needs. And as we can connect to source, to God, to the universe, this feeling of I'm worthy, I am loved just for being a be like a soul in this timeline, this is going to shift how we look at relationships. Because a lot of relationships today, like I was saying, is kind of replacing or trying to supplement this need of our connection to source and also this need for our connection to be deeply dropped into our tribe. So when I've built my soul family over the last like eight years, um, I've noticed that a lot of the co-regulations, so like co-regulation means like when you're upset or you feel out of alignment and you're just like, you can't get back into your center, uh, you call someone that loves you and they listen to you and they help remind you of your authentic self and they guide you back to the point of, okay, what do you need in order to feel safe in the situation? How can you show up for yourself? And also, I'm just here. Even if I don't have the answer, I'm here. You're connected. We're connected. This is the point. We're connected. As I built this and I felt this on an embodiment level, my need for a partner has completely shifted because a lot of these needs that were, I was I'm talking about of us being connected to source and being connected to our community, we're putting all in one box of being connected to our partner, which is also just like a whole lot of pressure to put on one person. And this is what usually leads to codependency which is like, I need you to act in a certain way and be a certain way and treat me in a certain way in order for me to feel complete in my body and to feel like my needs are met, which is not healthy. Uh, there's a new word coming out in a lot of the therapy and like the conscious communities that I am in called interdependence. And interdependence means I am a sovereign being. I have a connection to source. I feel very su supported and guided by the universe. I can take care of myself in the 3D, in the physical world. And also, 
I love you. I trust you enough to allow you to show up for me. So interdependence, like we are helping each other, but it's coming from a place of abundance. And when you have a tribal setting, you're not putting that all on one person. You're putting it on the whole tribe. So like in my phone, I have the people that are my soul family. I have their name and then the word family and a special like heart emoji so that at any moment, if I'm feeling dysregulated, if I'm feeling like upset or emotional and out of alignment and I need, you know, like on the game show, like where you phone a friend and I need to do that, I will type in family and there's about 10 or 15 of them. And at any given moment, no matter what time of day it is, because everyone's spread across the world, someone will be awake and someone will be available to co-regulate with me so that I can come back to my center. And I do not put this on a partner and I do not need a partner to do this. Of course, if your partner wants to show up for you, this is a beautiful space for that. But it's a lot of pressure to put on one person if that is the only person in your life. We're not meant to have relationships in silos where we are putting all of this in one person that they need to meet all these needs that a tribe traditionally and primarily in our bodies and our psyches was meant to meet. And so for me, realizing I have this very strong connection to source, it's always been there. Sometimes I was making men my church and my connection to source through programming, whatever, whatever. I have healed that. I do not, no longer believe that. I have a very supportive soul family who... I still need to message some of them back today because everyone's like, what's going on? We know you're back on the island. How's it going? Let's do a phone call. And I just have such an abundance of people that love me and support me in a way that's nourishing for me. When I think of having a romantic relationship, a partnership, what I'm looking for is very different than it was in the past. I don't need them to meet any of these needs. Of course, they can meet them out of abundance, but it's not out of scarcity. Uh, And... Also, I feel that myself and as a collective, we're going to start moving towards looking at relationships as a co-creatorship. What does that mean? What does it mean to co-create with someone in a relationship level? It means that you're going to partner with someone to do something in the 3D together. And that can be having a family, working on projects, building a life together like you know living a life together building a home or like creating something together in the 3d and a lot of people do this already without realizing it but the energy will be different than traditional relationships whether it's monogamy or non-monogamy doesn't matter the energy will be different because you're not putting all of your emotional and psychological needs on that partner to fulfill you're coming into the equation of I meet my own needs. I'm in abundance of support and connection. And you also meet your own needs. You have an abundance of support and connection to source and to your community. And how can we merge these lives together in a way that is serving not only just us, but maybe our children, our future children or the collective? How can we make the world a better place through our love for each other? I'm like, whoa, that is so fucking exciting for me and like so powerful. Um, Because what I notice here on the island, like if you live here, you see the cycles, you see people come together to learn, you know, they date each other to learn something like the soul growth, whatever. And if it's just, they call this a karmic connection when you just like learn something, maybe your soul destined for you to meet in this timeline, or it's an archetype of someone who reminds you of a family member or a trauma that you had. And then you either have the opportunity to work through it, heal it, or you break up and you you know, start the loop over with someone else. Many people do this on this island or you heal it. And then you, you just, there's the energy in the relationship is gone. Like the energy that needs, that's there to, the energy was there to heal that thing basically. And so you realize, oh, I don't necessarily need to be in a romantic relationship. Basically we partnered on this mission to heal this thing for you or for me or for both of us. And now we've accomplished the mission. And then usually what happens is they will break up but stay friends and we're all in the community together. And then other people that, so like, I really feel it. Kobanyang is kind of like the first version of like this new earth community that is actively living together in like living on the same small, very small island, part of the same community, very small community where everyone knows everyone. Everyone knows what's going on in each other's lives. Everyone knows who's dating whom and what happened in that relationship. It's like, we are a tribe, you know? And so I see people, you know, going through these loops of learning something, having the opportunity to heal something. And then I see other people who stay in 
their partnerships because they have children or they have built it like my ex and I we built a com- my ex Andy and I we built a community space together we had it was, this was basically our baby you know like we had our baby here together that we were running the community together we had the space and everything um or like they build a house together you know it's it's like when you live in paradise and you don't have the everyday life grind you have a lot more space and a lot more time to understand what the fuck we're doing here. And so from that perspective of living here on the island for five years, I have had a lot of space and time to not only witness my own growth and experience my own relationship dynamics, but witness it in a community setting and lead the community. And because I lead the community and because I host play parties, I receive so many people sharing their most in- intimate Uh, stories of how they relate to each other and because we're all just trying to figure it out you know we're trying to thrive in it and figure it out and come to an understanding of what is healthy and what feels best in our bodies and I see a shift coming Um, and the rest of the world they're kind of like like I feel like the outside world I call the outside world you know this is everything's a matrix Koban Yang is its own specific matrix but like the rest of the world culturally they're just barely getting to the point where like people in mainstream society are starting to explore ethical non-monogamy so basically like a couple who's open as a couple in whatever way to explore something while they're still in relationship to each other explore dynamics with other people romantically on this island this has been going for like the last 20 years so now a lot of us who have lived here for five or more years we're kind of coming full circle to you know i've dated many people i've dated many people at the same time i've done all the kind of loops i've learned a lot and now actually i want to build something with someone i actually want to be in a monogamous relationship and maybe i actually want to have kids you know or build something in the world together where we're in deep partnership and we're committed to this together I just find that really interesting. I love all this stuff. Like this is the kind of stuff that I coach people on. If you're ever interested in having any coaching on relationships or especially feminine embodiment or anything around sexuality, this is what I help people with because I feel like when we're able to step into um, feeling like everything about who we are and what we're experiencing is okay and doesn't need to be felt guilty or ashamed when we're able to speak this out loud in a way that feels safe and is supported um we're able to step into our authentic power and our truth a lot more and show up in our lives in a way that reflects that and i find that so beautiful and i'm here for all of that because what I've realized through um, hosting a lot of play parties, doing relationship coaching, and just holding a lot of these containers um, privately in group settings uh, through parties is that most of the things that we personally feel that there's something wrong with us or there's something shameful or they feel guilty about or this is just a weird thing that I have that no one... We're all kind of going through the same thing in parallel timelines like like you know if everything's like a train track we're all just kind of like going down the same path and no one's looking right or left or talking enough about it to understand that we're all going through the same thing and like most of the stuff that people deal with especially in relationships and around sexuality is is the same and it's going back to certain core beliefs that have the ability to be changed and shifted into something more powerful if we're again able to do it in a way that helps us feel safe Um, so we can move through it in a way where we're honoring our bodies and our inner children (sighs) so for me i'm here for all of that okay i'm gonna go to the gym now and I decided I'm going to do a play party next week. So if you're receiving this message, you are the first to hear. I'm probably going to announce it on my Instagram when I get to the gym. Uh, so it's going to be Saturday, October 12th, if I'm saying that correctly. So a week from this Saturday. Let me just check the calendar to make sure I'm saying that right. My computer is acting so funny. Yeah, so September. September. I really don't know what month it is anymore. Um, it's October 12th. Um, which is very coming up on my birthday. My birthday is October 29th, Scorpio vibes. So um, if you are on the island, if you want to come party with us, it is very exciting. And I even have a video called What is Vanilla Vanilla Play Parties? So if you don't know what I'm talking about at all, I'll put the link for that here so that you can watch that. 
And yeah, I just am activating and inspiring you to go be your most badass self in the world because this is what you deserve and this is what will attract everything you want into your life. <sighs> so Brittany Bond signing off, sending you all lots of love. Mm.